All right, guys, so we are going to talk about sleep today. Um, I typically do this with the brain uh, unit, um, and we're talking about why do we even need to sleep? What psychological reasons could we possibly have that make it to where we need to sleep? All right, next slide. Don't worry about the bell ringer. You're not doing them anymore, which I'm sure you are all glad for. All right, so when we look at, sorry, when we look at uh, our circadian rhythm, so what is a circadian rhythm? That is our biological clock. When we sleep, you actually sleep in 90-minute cycles, okay? Believe it or not, you need to get through five of those cycles in order to have what we would consider rested sleep, which takes most people around seven to eight hours. All right. When we wake up in the morning, our body temperature rises. That kind of is what uh, tells our body that it's time to get up. That's why sometimes you wake up and you're hot. Um, and that our actual body temperatures kind of ebb and flow throughout the day, depending on what time of day it is. Um, at our daily peaks, we usually are at our sharpest. At our daily lows, we're usually kind of in that groggy, I think like afternoon time. Uh, most of you guys have had uh, classes that were within, um, how do I say, you have classes that, uh, you know, you kind of get sleepy in the afternoon. That's kind of why it's part of your circadian rhythm. And if we get off cycle, meaning we start having issues with sleep, this could be if um, you are not sleeping enough, this could be due to insomnia, medication you're taking, whatever, um, it can cause problems. The other thing too, artificial light delays your sleep. So leaving your lights on, playing on your phones, all that stuff can delay your sleep. All right, so the sleep cycle was discovered in 1952, um, and he, the, what happened was this dude named Eugene uh, used an electrocellulophograph, yes, that thing, um, on his son to study sleep cycles. He discovered that we did something called REM sleep, all right? And this is what he used, although I'll buy, I would say probably not nearly as small, but he measured uh, his child sleeping, and this allowed him to see the cycles that people go through and discover REM sleep, which is actually a very active part of your brain. So there are five stages to sleep. The first stage um, is when you fall asleep. It's very light. Your activity slows down uh, and um, you start to drift off. Two, this is where your breathing pattern and heart rate slow down. And this is where you start to see a decrease in body temperature. All right. If you've ever touched somebody when they're actually like in like a deep sleep, they're usually cooler to the touch than if they're up and active. All right. Stage three is deep sleep. This is where you start to generate some low delta waves. Stage four is very deep sleep. This is where your muscle and activity is very limited. And then stage five is REM sleep. And REM speed is interesting because your brain waves actually speed up. And this is where dreams occur. All right. This is where you might hear somebody talk. Um, you might see eye rapid eye movement, something like that. Your dreams occur in the fifth stage in REM sleep. And this is to give you an idea of when stuff happens. And it's really confusing, but just understand that you are you go up and down throughout the night between all the different stages, all right? Um, but again, getting that fifth cycle where you get into REM sleep before you wake up is very important for good quality sleep, all right? Good quality sleep. All right, so... What happens? So REM, again, kind of happens at that 90-minute mark after falling asleep, and your brain waves become really rapid. Your heart rate increases, and your brain is very active. But during this time frame, you're pretty well effectively paralyzed. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's because your brainstem is actually blocking activity from the rest of your body. Um, it's very hard to wake somebody up in this, and if you're not careful, this is the time frame you would likely like sleep through an alarm or something like that because you are in a deep sleep um, and your brainstem has blocked activity. So again, you're kind of effectively paralyzed and it's very hard to wake up during this period. All right. So 
we do though we do alter our own patterns of sleep for social purposes this could be for video games it could be for parties if you get a job that makes you work nights uh, or have swing shifts like think police officers nurses doctors all right and if you do not get REM, your body starts to crave it, which makes you feel terrible and can get you sick because it also kind of depresses the immune system. All right. There's some other really bad reason, things that happen if you don't get enough sleep. So why do we sleep? Um, and, or this one doesn't explain why, but how long do we sleep for? Um, sleep is can be genetically influenced. Some of you guys naturally actually only need uh, maybe five to six hours of sleep. However, I would argue though, if there was no artificial light, there was no TV, no phones, uh, very, you know, no house lights, you would probably still sleep upwards for nine hours. And actually most Americans used to sleep for that long prior to artificial light. Um, and if you didn't have a reason unhindered and you could just sleep, however, most adults actually sleep longer than the recommended amount around nine hours. So that's even more for teens and children who naturally need more sleep than adults do. All right. So I don't know why that's so little. It says different people need different amounts of sleep. Um, and that is underlined. So I'm gonna have to go through when I drop these notes and make sure they're okay. Uh, so that's just it guys. Different people need different amounts. I, though the majority need seven to eight hours. Okay. You as a teenager generally need nine hours of sleep. Uh, but at the same time, sleeping too long can actually make you groggy. Uh, if you've ever, you know, did an all nighter, for example, and then got like a crazy amount of sleep, like 10, 12 hours of sleep, the next day, you oftentimes don't wake up feeling great. Um, being a long sleeper is not necessarily good and it causes you to be drowsy and do poorly. Um, also too, long sleepers tend to die earlier than short sleepers, those who sleep under six hours. Um, and there's not really a good reason I can give you to why that is, just statistically that's kind of what's been shown. All right, so understand that there is something called a sleep bank or a sleep debt. Uh, you may have heard of this before, like if you stay up all week, then you might be really tired and then sleep, you know, the 10, 12 hours like I was just talking about. Um, but do understand that even though you may have this debt for, uh, keep this debt kind of on you for two weeks, you can't just sleep it all off at once. Um, and if you continue to be sleep deprived, you'll start to feel terrible and possibly get sick and possibly gain weight and some other really not so fun stuff because really understand that it's important for our bodies to be asleep one third of the time um, of the day. And there's a lot of physical and psychological issues caused from lack of sleep. So it does really affect our well being. Um, they do say about 28% of high school students uh, fall asleep during class due to lack of sleep uh, or they don't perform well because of the same things. And the weirdest thing about not sleeping and the right rhythm is it can actually cause you to have like random bouts of energy and really weird hours of the night. So this is like being sleep deprived for like a week or two and then trying to lay down finally and then getting a burst of energy when you finally lay down at a 10, 12 o'clock at night. Um, or you get kind of that second wind. If you've ever stayed up really late, um, you know, you might have been getting drowsy, 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 and then all of a sudden you kind of snap back up with a bout of energy. Um, so it's just, again, not having the right sleep just really can affect your overall performance. The other thing is it can make you fatter. Uh, in order to uh, keep energy when you're not sleeping, your body naturally craves food. So what it'll do is it'll increase the hunger causing hormone. It'll decrease or suppress the uh, hunger depressant hormone, which is leptin. Um, and then it also will increase cortisol, which is your stress hormone. Cortisol does a lot of terrible, terrible things to your body when you're in a state of elevated uh, cortisol re release. Because things like uh, suppressing the immune system, so you start to kind of age prematurely, uh, can all be issues under cortisol, uh, overproduction of cortisol. 
Um, also, too, it can cause accidents. So, again, just understanding that uh, when you are sleep deprived, you are not at your peak. Um, actually, sleep deprivation can be as dangerous as a DUI, someone who's intoxicated. Because what happens is uh, your brain will get sleep. It will eventually force you to sleep, just maybe not on your terms. If you've ever sat in a class or driven, if you're a driver, and you had what was called micro sleep. This is where you just like, it seems like you close your eyes for like 10 seconds and you kind of break back out of it. Falling into those quick bouts of sleep can cause accidents because that's enough time for you to veer off the road. It's enough time for you to run into somebody, um, so on and so forth. So it's actually just as dangerous to drive sleep deprived as if you were drunk. It's not illegal. It's just also still not good. Um, to drive sleep deprived. So sometimes this is when, if you've never heard this before, if you start to fall asleep at the wheel, you pull over, find a safe spot to pull over um, and take a quick nap. Because even just napping for 20 minutes would be enough if you're close enough home for you to get back more safely than if you were to try to just push through. Um, so again, that, that idea these accidents can happen, it's very, very true, especially with sleep deprivation. Um, also, to understand that the concepts of sleepwalking and talking are not uncommon. Uh, and this is because, again, I said this before, your brainstem actually shuts, you, shuts down the impulse to move um, while you're in REM. Now, if it doesn't do that properly, that's where you get the sleepwalking and talking. And pretty much a good majority of the population will do at least one of these at some point in their life. All right. So, and again, remember in REM, your brain almost is acting as if it's awake, though going kind of crazy. Um, so there are electrical impulses for you to move. However, your brainstem shuts that down. And if it doesn't do that, your body reacts and now you are sleepwalking or talking. Um, it's also not bad to wake a sleepwalker up. You just need to make sure that you kind of guide them back into bed or someplace where they can sit down so that when they wake up, they're not uh, falling over or getting injured or so on. All right, so why do we sleep? Well, there's a few theories, about five actually, that are mainstream. First is sleep protects, uh, protects you. And so if you think about it, although we are predators in early human history, um, we also could be prey. And you were more likely to get injured at night. Human beings do not have um, keen night vision at all. So if you are asleep, you're less likely to get injured. It also um, is possible if you're sleeping, um, especially in kind of we slept in trees or in some kind of building or whatever, you're less likely to get preyed on by animals since you were not moving around during their prey periods. Um also to understand that it helps us recuperate. You actually grow as a child during your sleep. Um, you also grow as an adult, like if you're injured, uh, a good part of your injury recovery will happen while you're sleeping. It's not that it doesn't happen when you're awake. It's just that um, it seems to be more able to function and heal well at nighttime. Uh, also too makes memories. So if you've ever, you guys saw Inside Out, uh, if you remember the part where they were talking about uh, memory storage and stuff, it always happened to occur at night. And if you saw the part where they were doing the REM sleep where she was dreaming um, and it was kind of this crazy, wacky thing dealing with like the day's stuff and so on. Um, that is one of the theories that it kind of helps us store and understand what's going on in our lives. Um, and that's where the majority of our memory storage comes from. Um so again, sometimes it can lead to this idea of creative thinking. If you're a, someone who's able to remember their dreams or you happen to be someone who has, um, not fluid dreams, ugh, lucid, lucid is the word I was looking for. Lucid dreams where you actually are aware that you're dreaming or that you can actually um, change the dream, which some people have the ability to do, although that's much rarer. Uh, than you think. 
So you got that. And then also too, I already said this before, that growth hormone, your pituitary gland releases growth hormone mostly at night. Um, and again, as we age, uh, we actually spend less time in deep sleep because we're not growing and our growth hormone is not uh, producing as it was. So again, this is very important for kids. All right, so let's talk about two major disorders. So we have uh, our, uh, a couple of major disorders. So first we're gonna talk about insomnia. Now, 10% of the US population have it and most of it is self-created, although there are conditions that create insomnia that is outside of the control of the individuals. So two major causes are irregular sleep patterns and taking drugs or alcohol. And here's the reason, although alcohol is a depressant, it makes you feel kind of sleepy, it actually really messes with your sleep cycle. Um, it blocks REM sleep, which means that uh, it kind of pass, like as every day passes, that you are drinking alcohol, it can really cause issues with you actually getting the sleep you need. Drugs, so we can, both illegal and prescribed drugs can cause issues if they block REM sleep. And there is drugs on there that say insomnia is one of the side effects because it has that. So even if you're prescribed it and you need it, it can cause insomnia potentially, depending on what it is. So how do you actually lessen insomnia? Well, actually, if you exercise regularly, you will tend to sleep better. Um, this doesn't mean you have to go crazy and go to the gym every day, but even just walking or uh, riding a bike or just kind of getting out and being active will help with your bouts of insomnia. Excuse me, but not late in the evening. Actually, if, uh, working out late in the evening will cause you to uh, stay at an elevated state of energy. So it'll take you a lot longer to go to bed. Uh, avoid caffeine after early afternoon. You need to know your cutoff. So like for me, after four o'clock, I'm done. I cannot drink anything else with caffeine in it or I will not go to bed till after midnight. Um, I took That took a lot of, uh, how do you say, that took a lot of uh, just refining over the years to figure out that's my limit. After four, can't drink caffeine. Uh, avoid that rich food. So think ice cream, cake, all those kind of really rich sweets. Uh, they can give you artificial energy before you go to sleep. Relax, which is easier said than done. Meditate, whatever you have to do. Listen to raindrops, uh, some soothing music to help you relax. And then create a sleep schedule. And I think this is the most important one. Create a sleep schedule and stick to it. Now, I'm telling you this as I also have really messed up my sleep schedule over the last two weeks. So I totally get it. But understand that that sleep schedule is important and getting to bed every night is also important. Uh, to help you stay well rested. All right, so we talked about insomnia, so let's talk about narcolepsy. All right, so I actually have a good friend from college who has this, and so I will give a little bit of personal insight on this uh, disease. First, it is very rare. Narcolepsy is not a very common uh, sleep disorder, and it tends to hit people in their late teens and early 20s. So my friend didn't get diagnosed until her junior year of college, uh, when she was literally falling asleep in class and while she was driving and anytime she sat down for more than, you know, five to 10 minutes, she could potentially fall, fall asleep. Um, and this is a dis uh, disorder where you can go into REM sleep almost instantly. All right. Anytime, anywhere, whatever you're doing, although you tend to more do it when you're like actually like sitting down. So think classroom environment, driving, um, stuff like that. There are drugs for this disease, and if you want to drive, they are mandatory. Uh, so my girlfriend, when she got pregnant, had to get off of those drugs because they could potentially cause harm to the babies. And so she could only drive 15 minutes max. Like legally, she could only drive that. And it was literally just enough time for her to get to work and get back from work in the evening. Like she wasn't, eight, like she shouldn't, and she didn't. Uh, she was married, so she had her husband drive her everywhere if she needed to go anywhere outside of work. Um, it's believed to be a brain disease, but there's really no known cause to narcolepsy. Uh, so it's hard to say, even if it's genetic, um, just due to the rarity of it. So again, it's just an interesting thing um, that there's not really like a lot of good answers for. But again, you can go to REM sleep almost immediately. 
likely. Now, the same friend, poor girl, has rheumatoid arthritis, which is autoimmune disease on top of that. So I don't know if she just was predisposed to these diseases. And as one came, the other one just kind of came as well. Uh, but again, it's, it's a very interesting one and it does. So I would tell you most people who say they have narcolepsy, um, or say like, oh, I fall asleep really fast. So I might have this. It's not like that. It's literally like you're sitting down and all of a sudden you are in deep sleep. It's, it's very interesting how it goes. Um, now we have go on to sleep apnea. Now sleep apnea is also can be caused by lifestyle and tends to hit people who are obese more than the general population. Although you do not have to be obese to get this disease. And there's actually a form of childhood sleep apnea uh, that kids get as well. So it is still a sleep condition because what it is, is that you stop breathing and it wakes you up because your brain is like, why have I stopped breathing? So um, people who suffer this can actually stop breathing hundreds of times at night and it wakes them up. So you don't get good sleep. Um, but you don't ever fully become conscious when you wake up. So you actually don't know what's happening. So when you start claiming fatigue, like if you start becoming fatigued, one of the things that they will test you for is sleep apnea, because it's a very easy condition to, uh, control. All you got to do is take oxygen or forced air. It's not always oxygen. Even you put it in a cannula on your nose, or you wear a mask and it forces air, uh, to keep you sleeping and so you don't stop breathing. Um, okay, so night terrors, another condition that can affect sleep at night, uh, typically affect children, although they can happen into adulthood. And you're typically not fully awake during this episode because night terrors are not nightmares. Night terrors happen in stage four and it is not fully understood but these ideas of these fleeting and terrifying images happening while you're in that deep sleep causes a person to truly feel like they're being chased or attacked or sat on um, or whatever. So I just understand night terrors are not the same thing. And the person who feels them truly feels that their life is in danger. And that's why uh, kids, when they wake up, after having one are so freaked out that there's just very little to do to calm them down until they're just being held or, uh, whatever they like, they truly feel like something was out to get them and it's frightening and scary to them. All right. Hypnosis. So I'm not going to go crazy on hypnosis, but do understand that this is the power of suggestion. However, you will not be under this control unless you want to be. So you cannot use, I was hypnotized as a reason to get out of a crime because it doesn't work like that. Hypnosis just helps you get out or like through the power of suggestion, help you work stuff out. Um, it helps you focus or block things. So this is actually really good for smokers, uh, believe it or not. Like they can help them quit smoking. It can help people stay uh, start dieting or get on to a diet. It just helps you focus on a certain thing that maybe you were not able to focus on prior to this. All right. But again, cannot do it, cannot uh, be under control unless you want to be. All right. It was used at some point to try to cure everything. Um, but again, smokers and weight issues seem to be the thing that works the best. Uh, but you cannot claim you were hypnotized and do stuff. All right. There's, you have to want to do it. You have to want to be hypnotized to be hypnotized. All right. So yes, if you've ever seen like those, uh, shows with hypnotists, most of the people become hypnotized because they want to be. And so they'll do whatever ridiculous thing they did and then claim that they didn't want to do it or didn't know they were doing it. Um, but that's not true. It's kind of one of those big hype things. So if you go there and you don't want to do it and you stand your ground, they're not going to be able to hypnotize you, which means you're probably not going to be on that show. But I mean, Hey, whatever you have to do there. All right. So meditation, again, this is something that helps you kind of cut off from the rule, the, the world. And it kind of gives you this perception of, uh, sorry, I thought I was uh, laying out there for a second. Um, and this actually does not have to be the meditation you think of actually praying for like long periods of time. So think if you're a uh, Catholic, the rosary, uh, Buddhists have their own prayers that they do with their beads. Um, but like the, the repetitive praying, 
that's what I mean. Repetitive praying can actually be a form of meditation and do the same things as like just sitting there and meditating, I guess, trying to clear your mind and so on. All right. So you don't need to do this. This is only if you were just curious uh, if you're sleep deprived or not. This is not your assessment or assignment. Um, and I'll put that on the note for tomorrow as well. Like this is, I kept it in just because it is kind of fun. It should only take like five minutes. You're either going to answer yes or no. Um, and it tells you on the back that, uh, if you answer yes to more than three of these, that you may be sleep deprived and then suggests that, uh, if you are to add 15 minutes every day until you start waking up rested. So let's say, for example, you don't go to bed until midnight and you're really sleep deprived. Oh, geez. Oh, Pete's. <laughs> Sorry, my husband. My husband's coming through the door right now uh, of my office. Um, so if you're sleep deprived, uh, what that does is by adding 15 minutes on to your every night it gradually increases it so if you're going to bed at midnight and then you try to go to bed at eight you're not going to be able to go to bed at eight all right so that's it for today um but again remember you don't have to do that that's just if you want to and you can get off now i'm gonna exit out as soon as this thing decides to let me exit out sorry it always takes like five minutes to get this thing to want to get out why is that not opening no, it's still, there it goes, finally. All right, have a good day, guys.